All right, what is up everybody? Scott Brio back again with another video today. I will be showing you the best way to track audio in from your projects in the S2400. We'll get into more detail shortly here, but uh, essentially what I've found is there's a very specific way that you need to track your songs from this sampler into your DAW in order to retain all of the sampler weirdness and goodness <laughs> that you can get from it, right? And ensuring that your projects, your songs sound exactly like they do in the DAW as they did in your S2400 sampler. It's a very specific way and I'll be showing you how to do that. But let's get started. I think it's needless to say that I am still super excited about the S2400. Over the past few months that I've had it, it's become the center of my studio, the starting point for all of my music and has kind of dramatically changed the overall tone and groove of my songs. The S2400 was something that I had wanted and hoped for for over a decade, seriously. When Brad and the team over at Isla Instruments put the prototype idea online, I was elated. It had all the quirks of the original without all the bad ones like floppy disk drives, onboard hard drives, slow load times, short sample lengths, etc., etc. One of these quirks was the limited voice count. The S2400 has eight voices to mimic the original SP1200 sampler it draws its roots from. The limited eight voice count that you know, by modern standards can seem out of date and sort of like irrational. Like why would you limit it when something like an MPC3000 has 32 voice polyphony? Well, the SP1200 at its time was pretty revolutionary. Its last model release was the Black Edition in 1997. EMU ended the product when they ran out of their SSM filter chips that they used in the machine. Pro Tools and DAWs were just starting to show up in major and home studios around the world. Most people still had analog mixers with tape machines or hardware digital recorders. So eight tracks just for your drums and samples was kind of a lot, especially if you've only got eight, 16, 24, or 32 tracks for your total production. You know, these days with the DAW, we've got limitless tracks, essentially. The original design did have a side effect, and I don't know if it was intentional or not, but once you started cramming sounds into the machine, some of these sounds would inevitably start cutting off other sounds. This effect, which eventually made its way into the MPCs and other hardware samplers, was called choke grouping. Even Reason Studio Sampler had it. Fast forward to today's S2400. I set out to make what I consider a full song on the S2400. I wanted to see how much I could do with it, figure out some of its limitations, and hear what a fully produced track on the hardware sampler alone would sound like. It turns out a whole song on this machine sounds fantastic. It's not fully release ready in my opinion, as it still needs additional polishing in your DAW, adding in samples with higher non 12-bit sample rate for contrast, EQ, compression, effects, and limiting, that sort of thing. But with the recent addition of USB audio transfer, users can now track their songs in the S2400 into their DAW of choice in pristine digital quality. It works really, really well. The only problem is, is if you sync the S2400 to your DAW and hit record with all the inputs going to their own tracks, you'll often end up with multiple sounds being recorded over each other. Your bass and your hi-hats might both record on tracks three and four, for instance. For mixing later, this is not good. You need the sounds separated each in their own respective track. So in my second attempt of tracking my song into Ableton, I went pad by pad, soloing each sound while recording them into their own track on the DAW. At first, this seemed like a great solution. It meant I had to record each track in its entirety, but at least the sounds were separated. Unfortunately, I realized quickly that this way wasn't going to work for me. By soloing any given pad, it indeed soloed the sound but it also got rid of the choke grouping effect that I had worked so hard to perfect. The song didn't sound the same at all. It sounded like a lifeless, less intriguing version of the original song I had made. So I marinated on this for a bit. I figured there had to be a way to track my songs into the DAW while also retaining the original groove of the song. It was so important. So much of the groove is dependent on the choke grouping effect and there had to be a way. After a number of weeks, it dawned on me that the solo states on the S2400 were happening on a more 
fundamental level of the sound playback that maybe instead of using the solo or mute buttons, maybe I could just use the volume faders of each pad and sound and it would retain the choke grouping effect because the volume faders are not designed to mute or solo, but they instead just adjust the volume of any given sound or pad. In theory, every sound should play exactly as it was intended with all the choke grouping effects, but with their volumes lowered to nothing. And I might, in fact, be able to capture all of the beautiful nuance of this machine into my DAW. Lo and behold, it works. And today I'm going to show you how to do it. At the time of recording this video, I am on the October 1st, 2021 firmware version. The S2400 is constantly getting firmware updates, sometimes every other week. So there is a chance that a future firmware update might in fact make it so the mute and solo buttons don't kill the choke grouping. But for now, this is the best way to track your sounds out of the S2400 into your DAW. If you're using an analog mixer with external effects, this technique should work the same. You'll just need to use the analog outputs instead of the USB audio with the mixer and your effects between the S2400 and your computer. Now, here's a couple pros and cons of this technique. The cons, it takes a long time, a lot longer than simply just hitting record on all channels. Often you'll have to record a sound over the entirety of the whole song just to realize that that sound isn't even used in your song. Even if every track recording goes perfectly and your songs are anywhere from three to five minutes long, it's likely going to take you an hour to track in one song. However, there is no argument or instance where this way is not better. You will capture all of the nuances of your original song as it was intended. Also, while in song mode, it's difficult to tell what sound is in your song because the DAW and the S2400 playhead both start at the beginning of your song. You can't really skip to halfway through the song and just hit start. It doesn't really work like that. They both need to start at the first beat of the song. Now, if you've got unused sounds in your song, you could go in and remove these pads and sounds after finishing the composing of your song and before you track it into your DAW, but I rarely work that way and I'm always afraid that I will delete something, some sound that I used once in the song and didn't realize it. It's important to keep in mind that if you have your mixer or the audio interface routed into the S2400 via an aux send or something, that the S2400 passes audio even when you're not in sampling mode. In fact, it passes audio from the inputs to the outputs at all times, even if it's on or not. <laughs> This confused the hell out of me initially because when I was tracking USB audio track by track into Ableton the first time, I was getting all of the previous channels that I had recorded that were in my computer into the new recordings, like as a, a full loop. It was really weird. I had to mute my aux send that was going to the sample input from my computer, and then it fixed the issue. It was very strange at first, and no other sampler I've ever used does this. I imagine they do it this way for live performance setups and that sort of thing. Now, before we get started, I want to remind you to give me a like and a subscribe so you'll be able to see my upcoming videos and content. I do a lot of S2400 videos and gear videos and music production videos in general, so I think you'll want to stick around. Also, I wanted to remind you about Dance Diamond Mastering. It is the uh, mixing and mastering company that I have, and I mix them here and master them. I do a lot of electronic music, techno, house, breakbeats, future bass, dubstep. I also do hip hop, indie rock, so if you're Interested, you can check out my website, which is uh, somewhere over here. Just give it a look. I've got examples there for you to listen to before and afters. As I always say, you've got eight seconds to make your first impression. Let's make them count. All right, so I'm gonna wake up the S2400 here. I'm gonna turn over here to my DAW. I use Ableton. It should work more or less the same for whatever DAW you use. The S2400 uses ASIO for all, which is a free ASIO program for Windows. I'm not familiar with what it is on Mac, but uh, ASIO for all does work very well. It's very seamless. I was a little bit daunted by it at first. Oh, that kind of sucks. They're using a third party solution, but turns out it works exactly like you would want Isla Instruments own <laughs> plugin to work. So why reinvent the wheel? Assuming that you have ASIO for all installed on your computer and you've already figured out how to get all of your channels into your DAW. Starting from there, I'm gonna show you the way that I have figured out how to record this thing in. All right, so um, what I have here, what you're looking at is a song that I did recently. It is a drum and bass song called Without You. I have three groupings here, and um, these three groupings are the various 
these instances um, of me testing out my recordings into Ableton from the S2400 and having various levels of success or failure along the way. This first grouping here is, as you can see, it's just four stereo channels. It's, you know, one and two, three and four, five and six, and seven and eight. And nine and 10 are intended for recording the main output of the S2400. So unless you're, you know, needing to just record a stereo file, they're, they're not really used. But as you can see here, I'm gonna play some of this for you. Just as a brief overview, what essentially um, was happening was because there's only eight channels in the S2400 and you're using choke grouping, this song in particular, this, the reason why I'm using this song in particular is because I made a full song on the S2400. And by doing that, I used a large track count. And when you get to a large track count in the S2400 with only eight channels, you inevitably start running into choke grouping, sounds cutting each other off. And there's a lot of that in this song. And so this is a perfect example to showcase why this is important. On this first track here, I didn't even bother labeling these because as you'll see, they contain multiple different sounds. Let me just play it from the start here. And so you can see here, we've got like the bass sound and that's fine. Uh, looks like the bass sound mostly contains just itself. But then up here, you can hear the bass sound and the piano are on the same track. As is this, where we've got, you know, the kick, the hi-hats, and even, I think, some bass. Yeah, we've got some like wobble basses. So this obviously wasn't going to work. Recording it in all four channels does preserve the overall um, choke grouping of the song, but it makes it so that you can't go in and mix it because you have stuff recorded over each other. So that's no good. So let's uh, turn this one off. Let's just go on to the next one here. This is soloed and recorded per track. And so this is when I was thinking, oh cool, I can just solo the channels, any given pad and sound on this 2400, and it will record as I was hoping it would, keeping the choke grouping effect, but it does not. Um, and so you'll see that here, it's, you know, again, this is gonna be a little bit tough to hear because I can hear uh, the difference between what it should sound like and what this version sounds like but um, I think I can I can show you especially in the um, exciter hats here you'll be able to see in here this this section there's a lot of choke grouping so let's just play it from here <laughs> should be able to hear and it doesn't really happen. In fact, let's just loop this. So now you can see, I mean, it sounds okay. It does, but uh, the quality of the recordings is great. Um, but as you can see here with something like this exciter hat, um, these are the full, these are the full hats. They're, they're playing out in its entirety. There's no choke grouping or, or, or there's no choking or anything uh, going on. And I know for a fact that that hat shares a channel with something else. And so it should be cutting the hats off and it's not. So let's go to the grouping where I lower the volume of every given channel. And you can see right away, look at those exciter hats right here versus uh, these. I mean, that's the whole hat and that's not what we want. This, it's being cut off. Right, so that's what we want because it's sharing the track with another sound and that is crucial to the groove, the sound of the original track that's been made in the S2400. So let's play this segment back and, and compare and contrast it with, with this other one. So all of this highlighted still, so it's, uh, it's looped. So I'll go ahead and play this section for you.
All right, so there was some volume changes in there, but essentially what you're hearing is uh, the exact problem that I was trying to figure out. And I'm so glad that I did find a way to make this work. Now that you can hear the differences, I'm going to show you how to do this on the computer. So let's open a new live set here. I'm not gonna do it in this one. We're just gonna start fresh. I'm gonna go into settings and you wanna make sure, yep, you're on ASIO for all. Make sure all your inputs and outputs are set up. And now we're just gonna make a bunch of audio tracks. There's a bit of a workflow to this. So what you essentially want to do is bring up the first bank that you're using on your song and you're going to want to drop all of the faders. So bring everything down to zero. And now, you know, this does, you know, I wouldn't save this because you want to ensure that you can come back to your mix and have it sound good in the S2400. And it doesn't mean that you're going to have to remix it in your computer, but that is the point of this, right? So you wanna get good, healthy recordings for everything, and then it'll make it easier for you to go in and start uh, editing and, and um, you know, uh, rearranging or uh, mixing or whatever. So this first one, let's bring this up. What is this? Okay, so that's our bass sound. So this is my workflow. So I start with the very first one, test it to make sure that's a, a sound that I want to record, but we're just gonna do all of them. And then uh, shift pad and you want to go over here and uh, look at what channel that is uh, going into. So it's one and two. This is an interesting point. So channel one is the main channel that that pad is using. Channel two is the alt channel, alternative channel. So what that means is if at any given time, the sound tries to go out of channel one and it gets choked by something else, it's going to default to trying channel two as a second option. And now if both channel one and channel two, there's something else playing or other things playing, it will get cut off. But what this means is, is that you have two tries for that sound to try to make it out of the machine into your computer. So this is very important. You want to set up two channels for recording this one channel. You want the first one to be one and the first one to be uh, channel two. So that's what we're gonna do. In Ableton, I hit uh, control and I can set up both of these for recording. And I'm gonna go one and go two. From there, what you wanna do is go shift sync and make sure you are set up uh, for your clock source to be USB B or uh, whatever else you're using to sync it with um, your DAW. So now that we have that, then we go into song mode. And I should say, this is assuming that you already have a song set up in song mode. It's very crucial to recording things in the way that you want to uh, in the DAW because you essentially want to have everything laid out. As you'll see here, you can just hit play and record on your computer and it will work its way through the song and you don't have to worry about switching, you know, sequences. It gets kind of messy. So now that we're in song mode, we have our one fader up to record the bass. We also have uh, one and two channels set up in Ableton ready to record. And we are going to just uh, hit record. And now you wait. Lots of waiting in this process. <laughs> you know, I usually watch YouTube videos or whatever, um, listen to a podcast, something, you know, because there's, you're essentially just waiting for the whole track to play through a number of times. So we'll probably fast forward through some of this. And I don't know if you can see it from this camera, the lens is a little, uh, blurry at times it's not the best lens but um it's working its way through the song patterns um we're on four four again and we'll probably go to five after this and that sort of thing all right so we have reached the end of the song and uh, what i like to do is just put a little marker here just so i know that the end is right there Something to note, so while this did just record the bass sound on both channels one and two, uh, you can delete the second one because uh, it's a 
copy, but there are instances where that won't happen. And I've got a screenshot here that I will bring up for you to show you. As you can see in this screenshot on the two channels, the main channel and the alt channel for this particular sound that I was recording in from another song, the first channel, the main channel, did record the sound there and then it used the alt channel for something else. So important to note that you should do this, otherwise you might end up with bits of your song that are missing that you thought were there or whatever. And, and it, I mean, it could be kind of impossible to figure out what should be there and what shouldn't. So it's important to do this right the first time. Moving on to the next sound, I'm not gonna do every sound in the song because it's gonna take forever. I mean, it literally can take like an hour to, just to do one song. Uh, but you know, as you see the way I do this, you'll get the gist. So now go out of song mode, exit song mode, bring down the first fader, bring up the second sound here and that is our piano sound and what is that on let's go to shift pad scroll down that is on channel two and two and so we're already set up on two here let's go ahead and just record enable that sound everything is still synced let's see still good on usb yep you can go to song mode again important to enter song mode so that it knows to start at the beginning of the song hit back and record and we should be well on our way oh i forgot to mute the first track that i recorded again uh the usb audio thing i think it might have something to do with the the inputs and the outputs in asio for all it's feeding it back into the s2400 but i just you know just to keep it simple i just uh you know mute them in my daw okay so now record All right, that is sound number two. Um, let's do one more. Uh, I think you get the picture by now, but uh, just for good measure. So uh, out of song mode, drop your second fader, bring up the third and hit record. All right, there we go. Three sounds recorded. Um, it's an interesting process. I will say still, even knowing how long it is, kind of excruciating, um, still worth it. And by a lot, because this thing sounds incredible. It sounds like no other drum machine I've ever used or sampler. It's super easy to use and it literally just makes my productions go 10 times faster. Um, almost every time I turn this thing on and start making something, it turns into a full song in my DAW and my production rate has kind of skyrocketed. I, I don't want to be too big of a fanboy, but uh, that's why I like it. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, leave me uh, some comments. Let me know if uh, you run into any snags with this or if you know uh, it has made your productions better. And uh, give me a like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. Anyway, this has been a long one, but uh, thank you for tuning in. I am Scott Brio and I will see you all on the next one. Peace out.